In this video, we will show you how to connect VoiceFlow to Make. If you are not familiar with Make yet, Make is platform which allows you to visually create, build, and automate workflows. It enables applications, apps, and process steps to be linked with each other and run seamlessly in the background. Make is perfectly suited to optimize processes and workflows which enhance automation and increase productivity. Most importantly, Make is designed to be easy to use for users who have no coding skills. If you do not have an account yet, you can create a free account which should be enough for most of the user cases. I also put a link below if you would like to get a discount. Previously I have created a scenario which shows here. It takes a question from user input and feeds that question to ChatGPT. After receiving the answer from ChatGPT, it can display it to the user and it also can send an email to the user with the answer. The whole process is automated and finished in the back end. Now the question is how I connect the voice flow chat bot to the scenario. In the next, I will show you how to do it. I have logged on to my make account. Here shows the dashboard of my account. I will show you how to create a new scenario. We can click this pink button on the top right corner. In make, a scenario is a unit which can perform and finish a certain task. It usually comprises several modules or apps, each of which has a specific function. Now we are on the new scenarios page. Let us enter a name for this scenario. On the top left corner, I would like to enter voice flow demo, so we know what this scenario does. Next, we click the big plus sign at the center. As you can see, a list of apps is shown. Make claims it has over 1,500 apps, which is very convenient for user to choose. At the bottom of the list, we can enter webhooks to search for this app. A webhook is a very useful method for sending data from one system to another when an event occurs. On the top of the list, we click on the webhooks icon. In the triggers, we choose the custom webhook to receive data from voice flow. This is the start of the scenario, which triggers the whole process after voice flow sends the JSON data to the webhook. Click here to create a new webhook. For the name of the webhook, you can use the default name. I am going to change it to voice flow to make, which I think is better for understanding. After this, you may click on the button to save the setting. But before we save the setting, we have one more thing to do. We are going to slide this to show advanced settings to configure data structure. On this window, we scroll down to the bottom. Because voice flow will send data in a JSON format to the webhook, we need to configure the settings to allow the webhook to accept this format. In the JSON pass-through, we select Yes. After saving the settings, we have created a webhook. The URL of the webhook is shown as blue. We need this URL for the voice flow to send data to. We click the button to make a copy of the webhook URL. On a notebook, we paste the URL, which will be used later in our voice flow API settings. Let us move to voice flow canvas. We place an API block to test sending data to the webhook. We are going to configure the API settings. First, let us paste the URL of the webhook, which we just saved on the notebook. Since we will send the data out, we select Post Request. Next, in the Body section, we click the plus sign to add a key value pair. Make sure we select the from data among the three options. For the demo purpose, we will simply send a name parameter to the webhook. Let us enter name as the key and Jack as the value. Then we click the Send Request button to test our API settings. We see the status code 200, which means the API has successfully sent the data to the webhook. Let us move to the webhook. It shows green words successfully determined. This tells us that the webhook has received data and the data structure is JSON format, which matches the settings. After this, you can add whatever apps to process the data and perform tasks as desired. In this demo, I will use a simple webhook response app to accept and show the data. After connection, we click the icon to configure settings. We leave the status value as default. In the body section, we can add the data we want. It shows the data from the first webhook. We click the name and add it to the body. Now we have two webhooks apps. The first one can receive JSON data from the voice flow API. It will pass the data to the second webhook app. Let us click the run once button to test this simple scenario. The first webhook is now waiting for a data trigger. Let us get back to the voice flow canvas. We are going to send another test with a new data. We enter a new name, Tom, so we can tell if the webhook receives the new data. We click the send request button, and it shows the successful status code 200. We then check the webhook, which has stopped waiting. 
we click the bubble to see the status. In the bundle one, we can see the key value pair data, which is named Tom. This is the value sent by the voice flow. Next, we click the bubble of the second app. We can see the body with the value Tom, which is passed from the first webhook app. So far, we have successfully sent data from voice flow, which is further passed to the next app. In the following, we will show you how to increase the flexibility by using a variable. We will use a variable name to store the user's input. We will ask the user to enter his name, which will be saved in the variable. The API will convert the data to JSON and send it over to the webhook app. Next, we are going to add a text block and request the name from the user. In the text step, we simply ask, what is your name? In order to capture the user's input, we are going to use a capture block. In the capture block setting, we use the variable name to save the answer from the user. Finally, we connect the capture block with the API block to finish the whole process. Let us get back to the scenario and click on the run once button. Then click wait for new data. Now the webhook is in awaiting for a data trigger status. We go back to the voice flow and start to run the test. This time we enter the name as Brian. The bot will capture the value and the API will send the data to the webhook. Let us check the scenario. The webhook app has received the data. We click the bubble and we can see the data of name Brian. This confirms that the voice flow API has sent the data. Next we check the response app. Click the bubble and we can see the body with Brian. This means the data has been passed from the first app to the second one. In summary, our demo has shown how to connect voice flow to make scenario using API and web hook, which can be used for many applications, such as order confirmation, automatic sending emails, and appointment confirmation. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.